All right, welcome back coders to another algorithms episode. Today's episode we're going to be doing bubble sort, which is another sorting algorithm that's very common, uh, easy to learn, and really important to understanding the efficiency and the trade-offs that you get with different algorithms. Again, if you are new to this channel, welcome. Uh, these videos are all tuned for brand new uh, inexperienced developers, this is supposed to be an opportunity for you to learn. If you need help getting set up with Xcode, you might want to check out some of the previous videos where we actually walk you through downloading, getting setting up, including uh, your first app and the entire process of building an app from zero. We're going to also assume that you've seen at least the previous sorting videos so you have a decent understanding of how sorting algorithms are coming together and some of the concepts like loops, arrays, other things like that that we've touched on in other videos. Again, we're going to go slow so don't feel like it's mandatory, but that is something that we're going to be assuming that you've at least looked at. Alright, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at bubble sort. So how bubble sort works is it is a sorting algorithm that takes a list and it tries to bubble things up to the top. Specifically in our case, the larger numbers are going to bubble to the top of the list and the smaller numbers are going to sink to the bottom. Now how it works is you go through the list two numbers at a time and you're going to compare them. You can see from the Wikipedia article on bubble sort that it goes two at a time it looks at them and if they are out of order, i.e. if the larger one is on the left, it just gives them a swap. And it just goes down the list and it does that. Now, depending on your list, that might be enough to sort it, but most of the time it's not. And so what bubble sort uh, then does is it goes through the list over and over and over and over again until everything has either bubbled to the top or sunk to the bottom and there are no more swaps to make. And that's where the inefficiency of this algorithm sort of comes in, is that you have to repeatedly go through the list over and over and over again until there's nothing less left to swap, or until no swaps occur. So that can mean, depending on how large your list, how many steps it takes to get it actually in order, this can be a pretty slow algorithm. That said, de again, depending on the situation, it might be better than our selection sort from our previous video, but it just depends. So let's take a look here at some actual numbers. So if we scroll down here, you can see it starts with a randomized list. And the first thing it does is it compares the 5 and the 1, and it swaps them. And so you end up with a 1, 5, 4, 2, 8. And then on the next pass through, it compares the 5 and the 4. and swaps those because they're out of order. And you end up with 1, 4, 5, 2, 8. So it's this repeated looking at two at a time and swapping that is the core of this algorithm. And honestly, what makes it really pretty straightforward to implement and hopefully easy to understand is because the whole algorithm is just repeatedly looking at two numbers at a time and swapping them if they're out of order. That's it. There's no other magic. There's nothing else special about this algorithm. So let's jump over to Xcode. So like I said previously, we're assuming that you've seen the previous video where we actually generate a list of random numbers. We copied this code directly from it. Uh, if not, you can just go ahead and copy this code right now. We're going to skip right past it so that we don't have to revisit it in every episode. Now, the one thing that we have changed about this is that we've changed it so the range of numbers it can generate is 1,000, and the list is only going to be five items long just to keep it easy to keep track of all the numbers that are going to be in this list. All right, so let's talk about the very first pass of a bubble sort algorithm. Oh, we've said this, what, three times at this point? Uh, what you are doing is you are looking at two numbers at a time and you are swapping them out if they're out of order. And that's it. So what we want to do to show how this first pass would work is we're going to grab the zeroth item out of our list and our second item out of our list. So that's index zero, index one. Remember arrays start at zero. And then what we want to do is if the second number is less than the first number, meaning they are out of order, then all we're going to do is we're going to say numbers.swap 0 and 1. That is the core of the algorithm right there. Just a couple lines of code. Now let's go ahead and show you. We're going to add a print here so you can actually see that this works uh, to some extent. Add a quick comment here. Again, get in the habit of keeping our code tidy. Alright, so let's run this. And you can see down here, here's our 
set of random numbers and you can see that our little simple algorithm looked at the first two, saw that they were out of order, and it swapped places. And that, if you remember the uh, Wikipedia animation over there, is the core of all of bubble sort. It's just looking at two numbers at a time and swapping them. Now the thing that's missing here is it needs to go through every single one of these and do some swapping. So let's do that. We're going to get rid of these 0 and 1 and we're going to replace it with a looping index. Now we're going to do something a little bit different here. Uh, you'll notice that you've done index is from 1 through numbers.count. Now you could do from 0 through numbers.count minus 1. The whole point is since you have, you're comparing two numbers at a time, you just need one side, either the beginning or the end, to be offset. I just like how this one looks going from 1 to count. So we're going to do that. And then we're just going to take all of this code right here and we're going to update it so that it works. So numbers, instead of going just straight to 0, is going to be index minus 1. So on the first pass, 1 minus 1 is 0. And then on the for the second number, it's just numbers sub index. So first pass would be 0 and 1 for first and second numbers. And then we're going to do the comparison again, but instead of just swapping 0 and 1, we're going to swap index and index minus 1. All right, so that's literally the same thing, just re-implemented right here, but now it'll actually go through the entire list and do the swapping. So let's run it to prove that. All right, take a look here. Here's our original unsorted list. And if we take a look here, you can actually see that there's a lot of bubbling that has already happened here. The problem is, though, the 128 is still out of order. And the reason why that's the case is because this algorithm requires you to repeatedly go through the list over and over and over again until no swapping occurs. So in this case, we need time, we need multiple loops through to make it so 128 sinks to the bottom. So we're going to introduce what Swift calls a repeat while loop. And what it does is it will do what is in between these brackets. It will do that code once, and then while something is true, it will keep doing it. So we're going to create a variable called did swap, and it's going to start out equal false. So now what this does is basically, since did swap never changes from anything but false, it will go through this code once, it will hit the while, and see that did swap is false, and then it'll stop looping. So basically, it is not a loop at all as it stands. All right, so if we actually swap, we want to set did swap equal to true. That way, when we get to the while loop, it's like, oh, yeah, 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 we did swap. We need to keep going until we don't swap. Now, there is a problem with this. Well, the problem with this is that did swap being set equal to true here means that if we ever swap ever, because we never take the time to set did swap back to false, it will never stop looping. And so what we need to do is for every pass through the list, which is this block right here, we need to reset did swap to false because the did swap is checking whether we've swapped it all during that pass through the list. And I hope that makes sense to you. It might be a little weird if this is your first time dealing with loops, but the idea here is to make it so that we don't end up looping forever. And so we're trying to encapsulate this little operation of going through the list and make it so that even though it is updating did swap, that every time we do the did swap operation, that it'll work. So you can see, if I cut this out right here, this part is just controlling the loop. This inner part is actually doing the looking through every single item in the list to see if it needs to swap any of them. So I'm going to add a comment here that this indicates this, is, this block is just one pass through the list of code looking for swaps. And so now, with that one addition of adding one more outer loop, you can see that now we end up with a completely sorted list. Everything that is large bubbles to the end of the list, and everything that is small sinks to the bottom. And to show you how many, num how many passes it does go through this, we're going to print out uh, numbers after each loop through here. And we can run it so you can actually see this uh, sorting it take place. So you can see our unsorted list at the beginning. That comes from right up here. And then you can see after one pass through the list, we've already had some good bubbling. So 360 actually bubbles all the way up to the top. 
um, and then there's a little bit of syncing but not nearly as much you can see for example like 98 is still out of order you can see that uh, 280 is close but not quite there and 216 it is correct uh, relative to 98 but it also needs to sink much farther to the bottom now you can see on the second pass you can see that it goes through and it's going to compare uh, you know 280 with 360 you're going to see that uh, the 98 and the 216 sink a little bit farther as the 280 bubbles itself up to the top and then with the second to last pass, you can see that uh, 98 is finally sinking to the bottom, leaving 216 as the last number that needs to sink all the way to the bottom. So this last line here represents the pass where did swap did not go into this if statement. It got set to false at the beginning of the pass, and it never went inside that if statement, which causes the loop to stop. All right, so let's go ahead and delete this comment. We don't need to see every single step. You can see here that we get a random list of numbers and our sorted list on the second line. And that's it. That's all of bubble sort. Hopefully that step-by-step -step process helps you understand. Now, if these videos have been helpful and you're learning a lot, go ahead and like and subscribe. They really do help the channel grow. They help the videos as well. And we also are looking forward to bringing you several more of these videos. The goal is to go through every sorting algorithm on Wikipedia and make it so that you have the knowledge you need to tackle any sorting algorithm in Swift. All right, thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.